If are in listen only mode. Welcome everyone to Admiral Markers. Thanks for joining us today. Toronto Labs with me, and we're going to take a look at choosing the right style of trading. Very important. Why is that? Why is choosing the right style important? Because no matter what trading style one has or trading strategy one looks at or tools and indicators, we have to make sure that it's in sync with our own psychology. Now this might sound funny to some of you or uh, you know, it doesn't make sense maybe, but uh, we'll try to explain why that's so important. Because in, in trading, it's very important to find a style that matches our, uh, our views, our bias in a way, our, our psychology. Right? Some of us might love trading stops, others might love fibs, uh, others might like breakouts. There's going to be some method or concept that suits us more than others. And it's important to find that and trade that particular family or let's say family of, of, of strategies. All right? Trading something that just goes against our hair in a way or doesn't suit our, um, our way of looking at the charts is just going to be uh, non-profitable at the end of the run. We can try to do it. We can try to uh, trade that way, but at the end of the day, we have to find something that flows within us, that's easier to, to comprehend within us so that we know that whatever we're trading feels natural and is, is more of the flow in a way. All right, so that's what we're going to take a look at today. But first of all, the disclaimer explaining that the online educational material here is developed by uh, Admiral Markets John to and myself here for a global audience. Please take into account that the info here is not suitable, may not be suitable for everyone. To get the corresponding info on charting conditions and other details, take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact an appropriate entity. Also, the risk involved in trading and in global financial markets and Forex is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational and informational purposes only. All right, so by continuing watching this webinar, you agree with the uh, content mentioned in this disclaimer and realize that Forex is risky and you are responsible for those risks. And we're just trying to uh, provide some education and information here. Good. Thanks for your attention. Today's goal, finding the right style of trading, understanding the various styles, and finding the right style for you. So, as I said, at the very start, the very bat, main goal, finding a style that matches your trading psychology. All right? Maybe your trading psychology just sees chart patterns right off the bat. Well, then that's something you want to focus on. Maybe your trading psychology sees um, reversals easier than other traders. You want to find something where you can get that edge compared to other traders, where you can get that edge and master something by yourself, right, more than you would expect with other, uh, let's say, niches within Forex trading. But we're looking at within forex trading all kind of niches and specializations. You want to specialize in something where you stand out, where you are better, you're near the best, kind of, and you have tools and, and, and strategies that you use that you like, that you can implement easier, and that just match your psychology. All right? I, myself, for instance, I am a perfect match for moving averages. I just love them and uh, know how to use them, I feel comfortable with them, I understand them, I know when to use them, when not to use them, and I just, I'm in sync and in harmony when using those. That's me. It doesn't have to be you, right? That's the whole point. Maybe you're a great FIB trader. Now, that does require some practicing at the, the very beginning and as you continue throughout your career before you have a solidified and solid trading plan that does not require as much uh, tinkering around and playing around with. At the beginning, some degree of, of kind of like testing various concepts, tools, and tools and indicators is important to know which matches your psychology. That's a normal process. That's good. But what we want to avoid 
is that we're bouncing around from strategy to strategy, from tool to tool, from indicator to indicator for too long, right? Because otherwise we can't continue and deepen our knowledge. We can't deepen our experience. We can't uh, become the master in a specific field. Because, other, because then we don't like deepen our knowledge, right? If you use one tool for a few days, then move on to the next tool, then move on to the next tool. Uh, basically, this is called bouncing about and bouncing around, and you're not going to get that specialization. You're not going to get the experience, right? The tool and indicator will provide us value, really. Yes, it's true. But it's our experience, our knowledge of the tool and how to use the tool. That's key not the tool indicator itself. So by jumping around from tool to tool, it's good at the beginning to know which one suits our psychology. What we're trying to basically find, and what we're trying to do at the beginning is find the right tool set, find the right strategy set. So obviously we need to you know, practice a bit with all of them so that we have an idea you know, which one could be the better one. But then, when we found the one that matches our psychology, we want to stick to those because otherwise bouncing around doesn't give any advantage. Actually, what happens is that, uh, unfortunately, is that we, we know a bit about everything but not enough about one thing or a few things. That's the danger. That's what we want to avoid. It's like a pendulum, right? It's like when you, let's say you want to go exercising, for instance. How many times, how many, how many people of us have started exercising then stopped? started and stopped, started and stopped. This kind of like back and forth thing, this is, this is very important psychology. This back and forth thing, if you, if you ever notice that, that's because you don't have a rhythm. You don't have a, uh, a habit. You want to make anything that you want to achieve a habit. By making it a habit, you'll do it routinely and every day. And what we do every day is what we become. If we study every day, we'll get towards that goal at the end of the time. If we want to have a business and we work at the business every day, then there's a good chance we'll get there eventually. Right? So every day work on it, step by step, the routine, the habit. All right? That's why uh, basically we need to find something that matches us so we can do that every day and don't get distracted and don't basically give up on that tool after two or three or, or through two or three weeks or months. So some factors that we want to take a look at. So this is by far the most important. Uh, for some of you, you might think, OK, is that the most important? But I don't, I don't see it. I guess that could become more apparent maybe as you move forward in your trading career, uh, if you have those doubts. If, if you don't have those doubts, you probably went through that curve already. Um, so that's hopefully behind you then. And you've already moved a bit forward in your solidification of your trading plan. Right? Or maybe your trading plan is already firm and already solid, but you're just working on uh, making some details to your trading plan, maybe execution of your trading plan, working on some other strategies, for instance, etc. Okay, We could have a, a wide variety of traders here. Uh, here's some other factors, though, besides the ultra-important one, in my opinion, at least. Uh, things you want to look at is, for instance, risk capital. Right? Obviously, it's going to have some impact how you trade. If uh, if we have a lot of risk capital, and if that risk capital is a low percentage of our total capital, we're not risking much. Yet again, we have only to obtain a small percentage to get a pretty good sum of money. That's easier trading than, of course, if we have a low risk capital that is a very big part of our total capital. Uh, you never want to risk. Of course, you want to never want to trade with risk capital that shouldn't be risk capital. We don't want to trade with scared money because that is very dangerous. That would lead to nothing uh, but actually losses. And furthermore, we must never trade with money, of course, that is intended for our basic needs. So whatever risk capital we have, that's our risk capital. And of course, the higher that is, the easier to obtain a decent uh, income from this level or a decent revenue, depending on if you have, you know, if you treat this as your full-time business or not. Logically, that has some consequences. If we are trading with a small risk capital, uh, we, you know, could have even difficulties with taking bigger stop losses, 
we might want to grow the account faster, which means we might want to trade lower time frames. If you have a big risk capital and you're only looking for relatively small return, trading higher time frames uh, less frequently uh, and you know being in the market less often is possible. Right? That, that has, again, of course, less risk because we have less exposure to the market. Less exposure is less risk. So that's something, of course, that will have to be taken into account when making decisions. Now, of course, not only risk capital, but what type of risk tolerance one trader has that could not be this, that could be definitely a difference between one trader and the other, and that, that certainly will have its uh, impact on that, depending on what kind of risk averseness you have or not, uh, could indicate what type you know what type of trading you want to do. Uh, for instance, if you're very risk averse, you might definitely want to keep that mixture of maintaining a day job, for instance. If you have a bit more risk in your blood, then uh, you could uh, work towards uh, getting that uh, trading as your full-time job, right? After a sufficient, of course, period where you've confirmed to yourself the uh, the potential of doing that, and um, also the support of you know the, the, the let's say the environmental support around you, etc. Factor three, experience. Obviously, the more experience and knowledge one has, uh, the easier it is to diversify, to trade with discretion, to trade lower time frames, and uh, that certainly is very heavily involved in screening time, right? Uh, the more screening time, the more experience we have, the easier it's going to be to, you know, to, to trade on certain rules, but be more discretionary about those guidelines, and trade lower time frames and understand the market and understand what you know when we maybe uh, should have done what and understand the evaluations understand that we went when we might have made mistakes or not it's easier to to just understand the whole process because traders have gone through that uh, you know windmill in a way if you don't have that level of experience it's just of course a matter of gaining that no matter what you read or uh, what you read or, or hear, you have to go through that uh, love of screening time to understand yourself. Of course, it's vital to have a good starting spot so that you're, not, you're on the right track. And that's why it's good that you go to these webinars and uh, you have a good guidance of the direction. You need a good directional, um, let's say, good directional uh, way forward, right, that you're on the right path. That's, that's very important. But when you found that guidance, when you found those mentors, when you found the way forward, then of course you have to practice it. This is basically the same like a professional tennis player, right? He needs a good coach to, to know what the route is up to, the, uh, to becoming the number one tennis profi in the world. It's vital, but then when he has that good coach, I mean, it doesn't mean that he stops practicing. He has to practice even more, right? So that's, that's what I mean. Um, opportunities. When you're looking at a strategy, you, you know you want to make sure that you have a strategy that, of course, has a positive system expectancy, but also one that has an equity curve and a number of opportunities that matches what you're looking for. Let's say you're trading a strategy uh, that you want to trade a couple of times a week, but that strategy is actually providing 100 signals. Uh, well, you know, in that case, uh, it's actually too many signals because you'll be overwhelmed by the signals. You wouldn't know which ones to filter out. It would be confusing. It would be, you would maybe be trading too much than you want eventually. Not good. There's no balance there. But the opposite is also not good, right? If you are uh, looking for a lot of signals, Let's say you're looking for 20 to 30 signals in a week, and you only have five, uh, then you could be basically your strategy could be testing your patience, and that balance between the psychology and uh, your strategy is not there because you could be very impatient about the number of, of opportunities, and if you don't get those, you could basically, you know, in a way, 
unfortunately take trades that are not part of your plan just because you want opportunities that are not there and you might start chasing the market. And you know, you could say, okay, this is the fault of psychology, but uh, it's just true in a way. But also, we have to say that there's no sync. There's no sync between the strategy and the psychology. That's why our psychology can't support this part, particular part of the strategy, because they're not in sync. So we can easily blame on our psychology, but it's also good to look a bit deeper and understand why our psychology didn't manage to uphold that particular part. Could be because of this. Could be because of the risk not in balance with the strategy or the risk not in balance with the psychology. So that's something we have to look at. Make sure that we have a well-balanced, basically, um, level of opportunities. Our strategy provides enough opportunities compared to what we want and expect. All right. Make sure that we have also enough opportunities to filter out a couple, because if you need to take every single opportunity, it could be good if you're trading more automated, but if you're not trading automated, then you don't want to, nor normally speaking, you don't want to take every trade that your strategy gives you as an opportunity. Uh, you would like to filter a couple of out to increase the equity curve a bit, usually speaking, unless you're really trading very automated, very strict rules, uh, and you know, that has a certain system expectancy, fine, but uh, usually it's not that automated, not that straightforward, then you want to have some leeway here in filtering out a couple of uh, opportunities. Okay, so what I would say, it depends, and this is of course just an example, because what you expect, what you want, uh, and what the strategy provides, you know, that particular, let's say, formula is going to depend from trader to trader, right? Uh, so if we look at want versus ex versus what the strategy gives us, uh, you know what I preferably want to see, and th this also really depends from strategy to strategy, but I want to probably see about two times as much here on that right column than on the left, something like that. All right. Now, how much you want really depends what time frame, what's realistic as well. I mean, you could want uh, 100, but can that strategy give it? Of course, we need to make sure that there's a realistic balance as well. If we want, um, let's say, 50, but the strategy can give 30, well, there's no balance in there, right? All righty. So important to get that uh, match between those two. So we have to have realistic expectations of our strategy. If we don't have enough opportunities, for instance, we could add filters or we could even add layers of trend or layers of uh, in in decreasing in time frame, for instance, uh, or if you want less opportunities, increasing in time frames and removing layers of trend, for instance, stuff like that, right? Let's say I'm using uh, uh, nine moving averages. Well, if I want more trends, how can I do that? Well, I just maybe get rid of three of them, for instance, right? If I'm trading the hourly, but I don't see enough opportunities, it's an option to go to the 30-minute chart, right? That's how you can, uh, some ideas how to do that. Another thing, goals and motivation. Um, this is a bit general, but still, we need to know what is the goal of the account. Growth account, income account, ultra-fast account, right? Maybe, let's say, hypothetically speaking, not to, uh, to make it, I mean, to make it very clear, let's say person A has $10,000 on their account. Let's say they reserve 9000 and $500 of that for their normal trading capital, and $500 they set aside as a higher risk account type, right? Just as an example. That 500 bucks basically means that they can risk more. On that account, that trader decides that he's going to, he or she is going to trade uh, 
5%. Very high. On the bigger accounts, that trader decides to trade um, normal percentages. All right. So you can see here that what is the goal of the account? That that, of course, has, uh, in a way, an impact. Now, this is only the risk, but it also has an impact on what kind of style of trading you, you do, right? Maybe instead of higher risk, the fast growth account takes normal risk, but you take more opportunities, right? Could be the same risk, but you just trade a lower time frame so that you're looking for more ops. And you feel comfortable with taking more ops as long as, it, as you're not risking with the usual account, for instance. It could be possible, depending on your psychology. I'm just giving you an example here. But in any case, the goal of the account, right, has an influence on maybe what strategy you, you trade. Maybe with the faster growth goal, you trade a different strategy and a different time frame than uh, on the other accounts. Same thing, what is your end goal uh, in, in the year or the month? What is your goal with that particular profit as well? All right, so those are things that, that we can think of regarding this. We need here too, again, a, a sync between the goals we have the motivation and how we trade it. With that I mean if we're expecting too much, if we just started trading a month ago and we expect to make 50% uh, within uh, you know, the next first year of our trading, it's not realistic for instance. So we'll be over risking and there's a danger of this happening with the account. The trader could be stressing themselves by trading lower time frames but not having the enough experience yet to do that whereas maybe starting off first on the 4H with less opportunities with more understanding of the market first with fewer ops waiting for you know the certain patterns to evolve could be more sustainable as a, as a learning growth path. So you can see goals, um, risk capital, the, you know, your psychology of risk, basically. Those are the, the basis, I would say. I, I have the sequence maybe wrong. But goals, risk capital, uh, and our risk tolerance are something that, in most cases, a bit predefined in the way that our risk tolerance is our risk tolerance. Usually it doesn't change. Although after ex more experience in trading, that risk tolerance could increase. Uh, also, after some bad experiences, that risk tolerance could decrease. But it usually, it's, it's roughly given. It doesn't change. It's not that dynamic. Risk capital, too. I mean, whatever our starting situation is, that is our starting situation. Unless we look for investors. Uh, but that usually only works out. I mean, in most cases, as I know of, is when you have a track record, right? Otherwise, why would the investor try it? Unless, of course, you have uh, some ties to that person, um, but you know what I mean. So that's basically the basis, uh, and this is a given factors, risk, capital risk, and goals and motivation. Um, experience of something is, of course, that is dynamic, that changes as we continue. Opportunities is something that we can alter. This is something we can easily influence and impact and alter and try to find the optimal balance as we move along with making our trading plan or optimizing our trading plan or evaluating our trading plan, that depends on what part of the, you know, your Forex career, trading career you are. Uh, if you're very far in that, then you're only evaluating. If you just started, you're building it. If you're halfway, you're working on it or progressing on it or etc. Now let's talk about some other things. Uh, our strengths and weaknesses, for instance, right? The strengths and weaknesses definitely give an idea of what we can be trading or not. Uh, you know, if you're, if I, for instance, my weakness was always if my if the price just missed my TP a bit. I did have the tendency then to cut my winners a bit short. 
not too short, but a bit shorter. Well, eventually, you know, even though if it's a few pips, it still adds up. And, uh, you know, just from my psychology point of view, my strength is the patience with uh, and discipline with training stop losses. And my weakness was waiting for those couple of pips. Now, a couple of pips doesn't sound much, uh, and certainly is not a lot when compared to the, you know, compared to, let's say, the, the risk I'm uh, taking usually on pip size stop losses. It still adds up. And if you can improve something that matches the psychology better, it's always worth it. So doing an analysis of oneself, of strength and weaknesses in trading, or you can write down any strength and weaknesses, but obviously it has more sense if it's connected to trading, is a useful exercise, I think, just to understand how you know, our own psychology can impact the, the, the strength and weaknesses of trading. Uh, if you're more of an impatient trader, you know, you might be want to trade more the five-minute chart. Uh, something to think about, right? Uh, if um, it's it's a very generalistic approach, but it could be valid. Um, if you have fear of being in profit, you might want to use, you know, using a tighter trading stop if it really accelerates away from you. If your fear of being in the loss and uh, the minus. Uh, maybe walking away from the charts could be a solution. You know, everything has its solution. We need to find, identify our strengths, capitalize on those. Identify our weaknesses, limit those. That's our role, and that's our role of our strategy, too. Our strategy is basically uh, geared towards finding the best entry, and our trade management is geared towards finding the best way uh, that uh, from entry to exit, right? right? Finding the, the best way once upon that entry to exit, and the best way that matches our trading psychology. And um, we need to know what our strengths and weaknesses are in that. All right, our goal always to improve our average win as much as possible compared to our average loss, and improve our win percentage versus our loss percentage. That is the system expectancy, as we discussed about last week. The strategy itself also has strengths and weaknesses. And that, too, is good to realize and understand and you know, look for solutions that could maybe uh, decrease impact of the disadvantages and increase impact of the strengths. All right? So that, of course, is you know, widespread of variety could be here. But let's say, assume here, assuming here I, with the trend strategy. Well, maybe, for instance, here again, you can see that the weakness is that the win percentage is too low. You have a system expectancy here, but you see that many winners, relatively many winners, or a couple of winners at least, go on to hit your target, but you get stopped out prior to that. And the win percentage is on the, relatively on the low side. Well, maybe using a tad wider stop loss, for instance, could solve that weakness of the strategy. You hand in a bit of R to R, but you increase the win loss balance. Right? Now, of course, then you have to see if that that change has a net impact, a positive net impact on the system expectancy. So if it is, then we can implement that. If it doesn't, probably not, although it depends. Maybe if it has the same system expectancy but a lower drawdown curve, for instance, it's still worth it. Right? So this is stuff that we need to analyze. Uh, but it starts with strengths and weaknesses from a conceptual point of view and then understanding how we can influence that, how we can adjust that uh, based on um, the strategy strengths and weaknesses. Also, looking at the equity curve of a strategy, well, first of all, knowing that, and but also trading and understanding it and ma making sure it matches uh, our psychology is important, right? Every equity curve is going to be different. And we have to make sure that when we look at the equity curve, we can imagine ourselves being able to trade it. Very important. If we can't imagine that, right, if we can't imagine uh, a particular equity curve with a drawdown of 40%, don't trade it, right? 
if uh, we can't imagine, um, I don't know, uh, the equity curve uh, not providing a consistent enough maybe monthly profit, don't trade it. Right? We need something that matches us. Or we can imagine ourselves trading. There's also something called a gut feeling in a way. Does the strategy match your vision of how you look at the Forex and price? All right. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's difficult to measure. It's difficult to explain. But if you have a gut feeling like, ah, I'm not sure about this, maybe it would be good to explore why that is so or understand more details about that. Is the strategy implementable for your psychology? We talked about that already. An ability to balance emotions, fear, greed, patience, discipline, and hope. Very important um, when finding the right style. The ability to balance our emotions, not only when analyzing the market, when scanning the market, when hunting for trades, when entering trades, when in trades, during its ups and downs, when trade managing it, all these phases we have, whatever our strategy says we need to do, we have to ma make sure that in all these phases, our emotions are balanced when implementing the plan and are in sync with the strategy. And those phases are not the same. We could have different emotional reactions at different phases of the of, of the of the you know the, the setup here. When we're looking at a setup, we could have a different emotional imbalance than when we're already in the trade. So we have to make sure that our strategy matches matches our psychology, not just in general, but also throughout the life cycle of a trade, from the very thought of of maybe a potential uh, environment that matches our strategy to the very exit and the evaluation. Does your strategy match your time availability to trade, hunt for it, monitor it, trade management it? We need to find something that matches our time availability, otherwise uh, we just have serious practical problems. This is not something very high tech, it's just very simple. If you can't trade manage for something, then you're not able to follow the rules because you're just not able to uh, to see the charts and make decisions at that time. Very simple. Our beliefs of the market and understanding our bias and mindset. That's a deep one, but uh, you know this is that's a, that could take time, but. Can you handle the following trading styles? When we look at this USD CAD, could you trail stop the 15 minute fractals when you have a big impulse like that? Yes, no, maybe, maybe, difficult. It depends. If you have a lot of experience and you know that an impulse like that usually doesn't get, you know, like a total whack around in 99% of the cases, you will have that patience. If you don't have that experience, you'll get nervous, right? Uh, so that depends also on experience. It depends on your psychology as well. Uh, so that depends. But the point is that everyone's going to look different at this. Some are going to look at this and say, okay, that big impulse is giving me confidence that we're going to get followed through. Actually, I'm going to move my TP from here to here because I think there's a good chance to get correction and follow through after that because it's such a big impulse. While others might be in fear and say, oh, I want to get out as soon as possible, click out here and cut their losses. Everyone's going to look differently at this. Of course, everyone sees the result now, but I'm talking about when this is happening live and you don't see everything after the green line, right? Obviously, we don't see the context either, so it's difficult to say, but I'm just saying everyone looks at it differently. We have to know our weakness and our strength when when, when looking at this chart and how that emotional disbalance we have at the time can distort our results. As you can see, a trading stop using the 15 minute fractals would not have done bad at all. And there was no reason to be fearful of that. How does one look at this, right? Is it something that you find interesting to trade a potential reversal here? Or do you say, well, I'm not interested in reversals. Uh, I'd rather wait for trend set with the trend setups. 
Right? How, do, how does your psychology look at that? How does your psychology look at trend following situations? When you see this, moving averages align, the price above it, continuing and breaking above. Do you see a great breakout trade and do you see great follow through? Or do you see something like, where's the reversal? <laughs> it actually continued with the trend. Um, I didn't see that coming. You know, <laughs> I'm just making exaggeration here of what you might be thinking, but the first kind of thought here, whether you see a great with the trend situation, or you're thinking when, when, do, when, you know, when do I have divergence and when is this this thing over for me to take the reversal? That usually would be maybe the way you want to take a look at the markets. So the decisions to make: first of all, what type of market to trade, range, trend, reversals. Uh, what I mean in general, I'm assuming that you're interested in forex trading, so I didn't even talk about that. Right? That would be the first decision: what markets to do. In, uh, assuming forex here, market to trade, range, trend, reversal setups, trigger to trade, is it the bounce, break, pullback, continue, are you looking for anticipation or confirmation? I'm more of a confirmation trader, but some of us like to look for trend line and take the, you know, the bounce at the trend line. I'm looking more for confirmation of the bounce at the trend line. How much discretion do you want in your trading? What type of analysis? Well, I'm assuming it's technical, but uh, time availability, we talked about it already. Instruments to trade, well, actually, that should be maybe the first thing, but okay. Time frames, right? These are all decisions we need to make. Instruments is probably first, actually, should have put that higher. Market to trade, trigger to trade, discretion, how much percent discretion, 100, 0, anything in between. Type of analysis, uh, type, time availability. Methods of trading, of course, this is something that we're working you're, you're we're working on or actually have already evaluated, etc. depending on um, where you are. We are using tools and indicators. Which ones? Avoid jumping from one system to another. We are uh, defining, you know, if you, no matter what, what you're trading trends or ranges or reversals, we're defining the trend. How do we do that? How do we define filters? How do we define opportunity? How do we find the entry? And how do we define the trade management? Chaos analysis, uh, basically, uh, sorry, basically something that Tonto, by the way, had a webinar on. Uh, in brief, it's saying that basically it's, it's called chaos, although it's actually the opposite. It's actually finding order in price. Uh, so it's a bit confusing, maybe. But what chaos is then actually looking at, it's from Bill Williams, and it's trying to find, um, yeah, it's kind of difficult for me to explain, actually, almost. It's a harmony in finding, he uses certain tools for that as well, by the way, tools and indicators. Maybe Talanta is better to explain it. I just can't come up with the words at the moment. I'll pass the microphone in a second to him. He can maybe explain it better because he had a webinar on it. Action steps, build our edge, expertise, defined goals, game plan with energy. That's basically last slide here. Uh, build our edge here to expertise, define goals, game plan, uh, and with energy, right? That's what we want. Situational analysis, understand our current strengths and weaknesses, build a trading plan that capitalizes best on those, note down everything in the journal, and learn from mistakes and correct strategy to match our psychology. All right? So that's basically our, our game plan here. Situational analysis, understand strengths and weaknesses, and then build something, and then have a visual, like a circle here, where you have a trading plan, evaluation, and a loop back with the uh, learning from mistakes. That wraps it up. I'm going to pass it now to Toronto and talk to you soon. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Excellent presentation. Yeah, you can pass over a presentation to me. I will talk about those things that will make you a trader and eventually that will make you a full-time, full-fledged trader. So we will talk a little about beginnings, dimensions, trading style, financial outlook, traders types and conclusion. Chris uh, mentioned uh, everything which is important in choosing the 
the right, I can say, time frame for you to trade because it's not the same as you, if you work as a part-time trader, full-time trader, full-time trader, mentor, and uh, maybe an analyst, it's, it's very, very different, very different. Uh, first of all, uh, beginnings, uh, inception, I can say, it, it's basically when you, when you first learn about Forex and when you, when you uh, come uh, into Forex uh, territory, you need to know that it's very dependent of your time and finances. So basically you cannot be a trader if you don't have finances to trade and you cannot be a trader if you don't have time. You can be a, you can be, I can say, a, another type of trader. But uh, by, by being a trader, I think that you need to work on Forex market. You need to work on yourself. You need to work on your psychology. You need to work with others. And by everything, when you have a synergy of every those, those every uh, things which I mentioned, then you will you will become eventually a full-time trader. But it's a more complex. Uh, you need to go through difficult uh, through different stages and. Uh, by going to that different stages, you will face difficulties. I will mention that also later. Uh, so you need to realize first what, what, what Forex is. Forex is not gambling. Forex is a profession, as everything else is a profession. Uh, whether you, you work in a factory or maybe you're a taxi driver or maybe you're a doctor, Forex trading is a profession. So there is a lot of uh, diversification in between those uh, trading types we will see that later but the, the the first thing you need to realize is what forex is uh, without a proper information you will not get anywhere so you will get nowhere you will be in the middle of nowhere you don't know uh, whether you have you have made few steps uh, upward or maybe you made a few steps backward you will be just in the middle of nowhere then uh, first if you are experiencing with a forex market and that is your first contact with a forex market you need to get a free information from the net the uh, net internet is uh, full of information about forex market generally you can you can use that information to your advantage then there is always uh, free information which is available in our webinars and by listening to me and Chris you will be aware of what, what forex is then after all if you if you want and if you decided to be a trader then you need to make a plan we talked about those plans we won't mention it because we don't have so much time to mention it but still we need to mention dimensions uh, when you start forex trading you will be faced with many tough de de decisions and those decisions re will reflect on your trading style those dimensions which you will be able to trade are price action price action and indicators combined I, pure indicator or algorithmic, harmonic trading, chaos trading, range or Renko bars, point and figure. Those are all, you know how we call it, dimensions of trading. Uh, everything, uh, uh, everyone of those dimensions have uh, the, the main thing in the profit. So the, the ultimate thing is to keep your balance safe, then, then to make profit. So first of all, you need to keep your account safe, and when your account is safe, then you can think about making profits so each of those dimensions offers you various strategies we uh, me and Chris are price action and indicators uh, indicator uh, traders because we usually trade price action combined with a couple of indicators Chris likes awesome indicator I like MACD so basically we are not naked traders we don't trade naked charts but we do combine price action and one indicator that indicator is usually MACD or awesome indicator then you can be a completely indicator based trader so you will be basically you will be uh, you will become a as a, a robotic trader you will either use EA or you will use a system which will give you mechanical signals uh, me and Chris of course don't do not recommend trading which is simply based on giving you mechanical signals because as Chris said, you need to have a gut feeling. When you have that gut feeling about market, when you feel the moves inside you, you will know whether to take an entry or maybe you won't take an entry. Sometimes not having an entry is equal to be in a profitable position. So uh, there are great uh, systems which basically give you uh, good entries, good overview uh, of the market by, by applying only indicators. 
but those systems are usually usually restricted to scalping systems and usually they're restricted to euro dollar trade or cable trade or mostly two of the pairs you can trade if you want to trade 23 24 pairs you need to trade price action or price action and indicators combined also harmonic trading is also a great way to trade if you decide to be a harmonic trader then you need to basically uh, learn about harmonic patterns learn about Fibonacci ratios all different stuff which uh, makes uh, harmonic traders unique in their nature then there is chaos trading then there is a range Renko bars trading pointed figure all of those things are different dimensions in trading after you have choose your dimension then you need to choose your trading style of course based on your time as psychology you will choose between scalping intraday trading part-time trading or investing scalping is usually done on M5 time frame intraday trading is usually done on one hour time frame part-time trading day trading is usually done on four hour or daily and investing trading or long-term long trading is usually done on weekly or monthly when you decide your trading dimension and trading style you will decide what kind of trading strategy you will apply so let's say that you have decided to become a price action and indicator combined then you need to decide uh, uh, which one of those strategies you will you will learn about price action and indicators combined then of course basing on your uh, trading style and trading strategy you will become either a scalper, intraday trader, pattern trader or investor. The good thing about the methods and especially about those things which me and Chris uh, present uh, have been presenting you last uh, two years are basically uh, we are always giving you the best choices among everything. If we, if we have webinar with you about uh, scalping we will, present, we will be presenting you best scalping methods in our analysis you can see a bit of intraday strategies sometimes part-time part-time strategies etc basically we are giving you the best setups also session recaps you will have best setups for that particular day and all of those setups are done by a unique strategy that strategy which me and Chris do is basically Camarilla MACD Camarilla MACD which we also teach so we have decided to become price action and indicator combined traders we have our own way of analysis and our own way of intraday trading and we are giving you the information for that maybe your style is not that what we do but something else if you decide to trade something else maybe your style will be chaos trading Renko range bars you will be given many free systems and you have been given many good systems and free systems about uh, basically from all of these dimensions we just don't like that point of figure because it's 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 too much of a different way of trading so uh, you have decided what you want to trade you have decided what you want to be you will make your trading plan but still you need we need to take a few things and we need to consider some things about financial outlook based on your financial situation you need to decide what amount of money you will deposit with your broker of course prior to, to giving uh, the money to your broker you need to to check whether your broker is a profitable one whether it's regulated one whether the withdrawals are very safe whether your deposits are safe and so on of course me and Chris always recommends we recommend uh, Admiral Markets as our broker of choice we don't need to talk about it now because obviously if we do webinars we also trade with Admiral Markets if you want to gamble go to casino trading is not for you if you want to gamble if you are a gambler then it's better to put your money on casino on the roulette or blackjack whatever trading is not for you why because as I said at the beginning of the webinar trading is a profession you are a professional you need to have a plan uh, without a plan you are lost you will be in the middle of nowhere so you need to visit psychology webinars read about psychology and work on yourself trading remember is not about only having a good system having the money to buy a system or I don't know having uh, the money to to visit uh, webinars the, the trading is it's a profession you need to have your psychology intact you need to be a professional in your thoughts you need to have a good money management and you need to have a good strategy 
always remember, I have talked about it, tripod. Tripod is successful when all of those legs, three of them, are standing firmly on the ground. If one leg falls, everything will fall apart. So, work on your psychology, have a plan, and choose what style, what type of trader you want to be. Financial management will also decide your trading style. If you want to gamble, I say again, go to casino. Trading is not trading one full lot on a thousand dollar account. If you trade a full lot on a thousand dollar account and you basically use 30 pip stop loss, then in one trade you will be risking 30% of your account. What should you do? What you should do is you should go to casino. Investment in yourself is the most profitable investment. Find a good mentor, then invest in yourself, then uh, try at, at least try with a small account. If you can make uh, consistently five to ten dollars on a hundred dollar account, then if you are six months, if you have a six months uh, consecutive six months without a loss or with a slight loss, two or three percent, then you you should think seriously. You should think about investing more money. It's the same. If you can make uh, $10 consistently each month out of $100, then basically you're making 10%. Then that will, the same thing, the same strategy, the same money management, the same psychology will be also applied to a higher, to higher account, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 euros, dollars, whatever. Then, if you have a lot of free time, you can start with scalping. If you don't have so much of a free time and you have your day job, you could be an intraday trader. For example, you have a relaxed job. Uh, you can start with uh, one-hour trades, basically watching top of the hour, TOTH, and placing your, your uh, entries at top of the hour. If you don't have a free time and you have a day job which is very responsible, you could think about becoming a part-time trader, trading four hour and daily time frames. If you're not interested in trading career, but you're interested more as an investor, you can start trading higher time frames, efficiently becoming an investor and making forex trading an investment. One thing is sure, trading requires money and patience. One thing is trading the account, but the completely other thing is building the account. If you remember, I have already mentioned that trading the account is usually done with investment firms, hedge funds, and other joint funds. That means that you have a built account. You have, let's say, that you have hundred thousand dollars. So basically, you don't need to uh, build your account. That account is already has already been built, and you just need to trade it. Building the account is usually done with smaller accounts in order to get them to officially become trading accounts. So the aim for building accounts is to become trading accounts. When you have trading accounts, then you have uh, you are able to withdraw the money. If you build the account, I don't recommend withdrawing the money. You know, guys, it's very uh, it's not uh, it's easier to to trade the account than it's easy, than it's uh, to build the account. Because when you build the account from time to time, you will fall in a trap of uh, leverage. And because you need to build the account, you need to have a big risk. You know, it's sometimes lady luck will be on your side. But you know, trading again, you, you need to have luck, of course. But you know, trading is not just about luck. And eventually, you will fail. So my, how Chris, Chris and I teach, usually teach you, is if you build the account, do that as you will basically trade your account. So if you risk 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 percent on a trade, effectively that is effectively trading the account. But if you build the account, do the same thing, but don't withdraw the money. Try to build it. It will go slowly, of course. It will go slowly, but you will be safe. You will, your account will be safe. Investment accounts are the separate accounts which you slowly build for a purpose. You plan to use it for a specific thing. Let's say for a pension. That means investment accounts usually trading is done on higher time frames, monthly, weekly, and basically 
you you you're waiting basically maybe for one month or two months or maybe a year for a trade to close. So investment accounts are usually separate separate accounts, and you slowly build it for a specific thing. Uh, now we will talk a little bit about trading uh, traders types, from a beginner trader to a full fledged mentor. Beginner trader is usually uh, beginner traders uh, hear that traders make millions sitting close to their computers. Beginner traders are very, very optimistic in their nature when they begin a forex career. They are very, very full of excitement and overconfident. After few initial successes, he or she may think that he or she can make money each single day. Every day. Money will drop out of the blue. Well, is it? Will it? I'm not sure. Beginner traders will do a lot of revenge trading. A lot of revenge trading. Usually when you lose, let's say that you're a beginner trader and you lose a position, you will double your uh, your uh, leverage compared to previous position in order to revenge your trade and get the money back. That doesn't work that way. Then beginner trader, of course, because Usually beginner traders are hit by lady luck in first two days, two months. After that, the account is close to a mar margin call. Then a beginner trader will start searching for books and signals from other traders. If that trader give, gives him or her, let's say, 3% in a month, usually beginner trader will not be content, will not be happy, because he thinks that he, may, he can make 10 20%. It's not serious, and beginner trader will eventually realize that having a constant of 10% per month is not advisable and it's not normal. Sooner or later, it will, the risk will be much higher than we presented to you, and those kind of tra traders will lose the money. Beginner traders usually searches for holy grail and indicators. Visit those free forums for free systems, snake oils and those things and even those beginner traders can lose a year or two in searching for holy grails and systems that do not work. Beginner traders do not have an idea of stop loss, they are confused with price whipsaws. The capital risk as its peak, the capital risk usually reaches is its maximum because it's a very close very close to margin call ignoring or trading the news blindly traders which are beginners rookies they are ignoring the news and when the news hit basically beginner traders do not know what hit them because they will usually lose a lot of money in the news losing money every day burning the initial deposit the sentence speaks for itself. Beginner traders usually lose money every single day. Beginner traders will sweat them every time the trade is taken. Why? Because they are using over leverage. But the good thing about beginner traders, beginner traders will have a great screening time, eventually becoming a developing trader. Developing trader is the next stage in uh, traders' types. And developing trader, we usually start to read books, and it's a bit careful about the trades. Developing trader still loses the money, but now those losses are smart. They're not big. They're smart, because developing traders always, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, uses stop loss. Trader starts using stop loss, but still over trades. From time to time, beginner trader, developing trader, can have a streak of, lo of losses and sometimes do revenge trades, sometimes. Uh, developing trader will realize that demoing, uh, demoing, doing a demo trading on an account is a necessity. It's a complete necessity. Usually a beginner, a developing trader will start a hunt for self-understanding. After many bird accounts, he will start with live account. He will realize also that Holy Grail lies in himself, not in particular strategy. Developing trader is a developing trader 
is in a learning phase. He's not a beginner, but he's still in a learning phase. Now, there are two separate ways. He comes soon, he will come to a vantage point. Vantage point will give, them, will give him a few cho two choices. Either to quit or he will continue to the next stage. The, I said uh, psychology still hits him from time to time, but not as often as often as a beginner's trader. Now, there are two separate ways. If he doesn't quit, he will continue to the next stage. Next stage is part-time trader. Part-time trader is learning to specialize in one or few particular pairs. Losses are cut short. When a part-time trader starts to lose, he will cut his losses. He will start to do scaling out. But part-time trader usually has, has a day job because, you know, when you start trading, you will usually have your job. You're not confident. You don't have the money to start with a full forest career. You don't have the knowledge. But part-time trader still has a day job, and because of that, he will be doing trades on higher time frames. The good thing is he will start to accept losses as a natural part of the job. He is still disappointed with losses, but not in that extent as a beginner or developing trader. Part-time trader starts to gain money more consistently, but still cannot use strategies due to day job obligations. He cannot scalp. It's very hard to scalp. It's very hard to watch 20 pairs. Part-time trader still searches for strategies that will give him a chance to quit his day job. Risk is calculated before profits. That is what part-time trader does. He uses a correct lot size. Revenge trades are still possible, but not so exa exaggerated. You know, revenge trades are the biggest one to kill. You need to kill it in yourself. And part-time trader is very determined to become consistent using small risk and less profits. Now, we have, after that, part-time trader, if he is consistent enough, he will become a consistent trader. Learn to properly manage the risk. Consistent trader is at least profitable by six months in a row. He uses, or I can say, if he loses in one of those months, that loss is very, very small, 2, 3, 5 percent. He uses a proven strategy, and he stopped searching for other different strategies. So consistent trader, we use one and only strategy, and he will not take a single look for other different strategies. Even if it's hard to stay focused, he manages to do so by emotion control. Now, a consistent trader has a good control over his emotions. He's not afraid to lose, even if he has some losing months. Two, three, five percent, it's nothing. It's very manageable. Sometimes a consistent trader feels pain. Sometimes he's still euphoric. It's a psychology, but you know, he keeps it under the control. He is very patient, taking few trades per day, using few different strategies depending on market conditions. He trades for a living and he is fully aware of strength and weakness. Consistent trader. He can start to trade for a living. And now, after a consistency, there will be, they will become an expert or mentor full-time trader. Expert or mentor is aware of any price ever or of any price level of any given currency pair. Full expert or a mentor or full-time trader needs to work with 23, 24 pairs. It doesn't matter if, if, if he trades Euro dollar or CAD yen or GBP Swiss. It doesn't matter. It's the same. Analysis works mostly very precisely. Expert or mentor is very calm and cool while trading. He's able to publish the books, able to successfully mentor his students, able to trade hedge funds and big money, and emotions have been mastered. Compounding, which is very, very hard, is achievable. I cannot say that consistent traders can do compounding just because of the psychology, but experts or mentors, because they trade with big money and they have reserve money, they can use compounding. As soon as he feels euphoric, he takes the profits. Able to study constantly improving his market skills. 23, 24 pairs. 
and expert or mentor will never tell you that a trade is a hundred percent possible because he is very very patient and he learned that in a previous stage consistent trader now the conclusion is this during your forest career you will go through these stages which we mentioned above some mistakes will be repeated from time to time but in a very lax extent eventually you will either stay at beginner's level or you will become a full-fledged mentor something in between maybe part-time trader maybe beginner maybe a, con con uh, a constant trader consistent trader remember everyone starts small and eventually they become successful everyone starts small so guys that is everything we have prepared for you today we need to have these kind of webinars because they will open your eyes you will have more than simple strategies and money management you need to know where your way of forex trader begins and where it might end if you don't have any further questions we me and Chris will conclude this webinar I have a question chaos analysis can you give a brief description yes Ralph we had a chaos system explained go through Admiral Markets webinar which have been uploaded to a website and you will see what chaos analysis as chaos trading is okay also scaling out we talked about it Ralph it's a way of taking part of profits during profitable trades you have webinars about it me and Chris have done many webinars with other markets so you can of course check it of course if you don't have any further questions guys think about it which we we have mentioned the, uh, we can mention today and eventually you will become from you will become at least a part-time or a consistent trader with of course our help and help from Admiral Markets thank you for for listening to us and talk to you guys very very soon Cheers. Cheers, folks. Was looking for the unmute button there. Have a great uh, week.